Checkity bounce check. Bounce what, what, check. What? 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 <laughs> I'm going to pop some tags. Got $20 in my pocket. That's what that reminds me of. Well, that's that was the something, intention. something, something. Sa, na, 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 na. I'm going to. Some, some, how's that go? Hey, look how know. organized I am. I have a whiteboard. Dude. I got a whiteboard too, son. It's uh, 10 feet away and, and about 10 feet across, but. Uh, I just don't have enough room around me, so I have to write down. I got a couple things. Let's sync up for me. Oh, shoot. What's up, Carlos? What are we doing? Recording season three of Off Your Flosser podcast. Already? What do we want the people yep. to do? Find us. YouTube, Apple Podcast, we're everywhere. Like, follow, subscribe. And go floss yourselves. And go floss yourselves. You know, it's it's uh it's saying something when you're getting a uh, mechanical level of uh equality going on. Yeah. It says a lot. Well, episode one twenty nine. It's we're yes. recording on a Sunday. I think this is the first Sunday morning that we've done, right? Or no. In a while. We have we have done Sunday. But but here's the other thing, and <clears throat> I wanted to mention this before we got really going. Um, episode 129, yes, but it's also Easter. Totally So happy Easter. And I would say that this is probably the most important day in a Christian's life. Um, Well, okay, anniversary of the most important day. Because even more important than, than like Christmas, Jesus' birth, because of the meaning behind yes but like so everybody's born but not everybody is the savior right or or come back or yeah or you know so easter has such meaning uh for a christian especially because that is the day that jesus basically gave up his earthly existence and went through torture and just agony and just just unimaginable you know uh to to wipe away all the blemishes that still exist and and we can continually be washed clean because of what he did for us so i just wanted to throw that out there this is um uh very important for us um, so yeah, let's start with that. Um, it's also a little, a little sad for me personally. Um, yeah. cause I, I'm, I'm not eating sugar and, um, you know how I feel about marshmallow eggs and, and peeps. And peeps. So, so let's just. Not quite just, on the same level, but I'm, yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> it's maybe 70, 30 level of seriousness. No, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no I, I meant of suffering <laughs> uh, uh, yeah it's well here's the thing um yes i can i can say without any jokes that i i was addicted to uh coke zero you know what i'm saying C- coke like the the drink oh <laughs> not yeah. diet drugs which i don't even know it's a thing but Somebody needs to work on it. Um, yeah. No, no, dude. I, I was, I was, Diet I drink, was drinking yes. way too many uh, Coke Zeros a day, and yeah, you know, talking to you know healthy friends and you know fitness people, the, the you know people that I know, and they were like, dude, you gotta leave that alone, man. There's stuff in it, mm. even though it's not. It says diet. It triggers other things, and that's why you can't. You're right. having a hard time. And um, I don't know if I lost any weight yet. I started on the first, like cold turkey, like three days ago. Is that what it was? It feels uh, it feels like two weeks, bro. Because today uh, is April fourth, um, uh, and you started on the first of April. Yeah, well, the last day of March. Yeah, so it's been about four days. Good job, buddy. But no, no. But here's the thing, dude. When when you're used to drinking maybe three or four a day, yeah, that's a lot, man. I mean, I mean, I get, I, I completely get what you're saying because it's so easy. I gave up, I gave up gluten, dairy, sugar, sugar substitutes, except stevia, alcohol, caffeine. I gave it all up at the same time for two and a half years. 
So I Oof. get it. It, it, it. It's tough. It, and I seriously, I think I've said this before, but I used to be addicted to like Starburst. I had big, literally big bags of it in my cabinet and I would just put a little bowl and put Starburst in it and munch on them while I'm watching TV or something. I, didn't, I never heard of I, the Starburst thing. Oh, With well, you, they have you, gigantic you, bags and on no, Amazon. No, no, no. I'm sure they, they got giant bags of everything. But I'm saying you never told me about the Starburst is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. And I'm sorry. Yellow and orange were the last ones I ate because I was like, it's better than nothing. So, you pink, know, I, I pink don't... number one, red number two, orange number three, yellow number four. In that order, if you don't believe that, you're something's wrong with you. So, not only would you say you were addicted to it, sugar, and yes. had a little OCD with it too, because yes. the the way you ate them, it's kind of weird. Well, it's it's just a flavor preference. Preference. You know, yeah. So, but it's it's weird because I'm not when diagnosing I eat, you. I'm just saying that it just seems like a like you had a system, a pattern. I mean, we are doctors, but yeah, maybe not of psychology. Uh, well, I don't know. We could be. Yeah, we could we, be. We do ther- therapy, therapeutic <laughs> stuff. Ish, therapish. Sort of. yeah. That's what we're therapishes. That's what we. <laughs> anyway, um. But, like, when I eat a meal, I usually like the very last bite, the one that lingers the longest, you know, to be whatever tasted best on my plate. That's not how I ate Starburst. It's kind of weird. Huh. I thought about that. Uh, I eat like a five-year-old, I've been told. You mash it all up together? Or do you have to section it off to where there's like a Berlin wall? There's a Berlin wall between each food. The crossover doesn't bother me so much like if things touch, but I got to eat yeah. all the broccoli first and then all the mashed potato first and mm. then I'll get to the yeah. steak or the chicken. You're or a divide and conquer type. Where, you know, my dad will just mix everything up and just get a little bit of everything at once. Yeah. And, and they're like, you eat like a five-year-old. I'm like, why don't you eat your food and leave me alone? I So I try. I'm a... What a, I'm an empathetic eater. Um, I'm an empath when I eat. I don't want certain foods to feel left out. So that's such a nice thing before you devour. So when I'm eating, I'm like I eat a little bit of this, and then the mashed potatoes is like, what about me? I'm special too. And then I eat some of that, and then the corn goes, uh, hello, I miss you. And then I eat some of that. And then I just, you know, make rounds. But don't tell my food, other foods, but the last bite is usually the best thing that, that I most ate on the plate. I got don't, you. Don't tell them that. So I um, so to, to the end of the whole sugar-free thing, I cut out oh, Splenda, yeah. too. <clears throat> so black coffee. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Black coffee. I see a black container, but I'll, I'll believe you that it's black. But I was drinking coffee. coffee black with with one Splenda. Now I put no Splenda in it. Can you have Stevia since it's like from a plant? Like I don't know who he get... is. Um, he sounds Eastern European. It's, yeah, because his name here is, would be Steve over there at Stevia. I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, I, I've tried it. He it, must I, be it, Swiss. It doesn't, it doesn't taste like it's that significantly sweet. I guess it doesn't taste like it's it doesn't taste like it's worth the trouble is, is what I'm trying to say. Well, I if I use Splenda, I'm using like three or four packs. Oh, really? So, oh, <laughs> yes. No, dude. Now I use stevia drops that I get off Amazon, Why which it stevia still has drops. Uh, not, just because it mixes Splenda and not something else. Because <clears throat> when I went to the naturopathic doctor, he said to cut out all artificial sweeteners. Except stevia because it was, um, I mean, you'd have to go like organic and stuff like that with it. But it's mm. it's more derived from plant versus all the chemicals that are put in like aspartame and, and Splenda. But it's different and than sugar. Sucralose and, and all that stuff. It is different from sugar in that it... Um, 
I mean, I've know. seen it around. It was on Breaking Bad. Stevia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or sugar? Stevia. Um, I, so I don't really know. I just did what he said. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a follower. Sheep okay. or something. Follow rules, whatever. Anyway, so. I did for two and a half years. I'm not using it as here's here's the psychological yeah. thing for me because I'm very weak willed. Okay. And, and my, even my wife goes, "The you will power is shit." You know what I mean? I'm like, I okay. I, I know, I know, I know. Here's oh, you a, want a I cookie? Wanna, um, sure. <laughs> why not? And she goes, "It's not hard to get you to eat." And I go, "What do you mean?" She's like, "You're always down to go grab a bite." And I yeah. was like, "Dude, I mean, I, oh, I've never, I rarely I mean, would ever go." Now I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean because I'm right there with you. I remember like, one time. Cheers to the eaters. <laughs> I want to say maybe 30 years ago. I was a younger man. <laughs> what? <laughs> maybe 20, 21, 22, something like that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I was, I may have been married and just visiting home or whatever. And my friends and I were driving around and. One of them says, "Hey, man, could could, could you eat now? Because I'm kind of hungry." And and somebody else goes, "Carlos is always down to eat." Yes. So I've always been like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've always had a problem with with overeating. You just like food, and Damn I it. there's nothing wrong with that. We this is our that's I think all. That's, just, that's, that's, <laughs> that's how all. We, there's just nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I, I think this is how we connected uh, on some level. We both understand the you and I, and, or you and, and your friends. No, me, me and you. Like, yeah, you you get me when I say, "Hey, I think I'm addicted to, <laughs> to certain foods," and you're like, "Yeah, no, it's totally possible. I, I totally get yes. it." You know? I feel like we're we're basically related pretty closely somehow by food I, or something. I don't know. I, like, is I, it I in our people. DNA? Yes. Um, what what breed are you? I'm Wagyu. Thank you. Um, so, I have no idea oh, what you speaking, just said. I'm speaking of wagyu. You know what wagyu is, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. But how did you get to that? Because uh, we're the same DNA, you and I, and there's wagyu uh, in there somewhere. Okay, like we're okay. part wagyu because we like food. Expensive. I don't. Okay. <sighs> damn it! I don't. I don't know. It just made sense in my mind, and then okay. I said it, and you, it's, you lost me. I lost your train of thought there, and it, it didn't really make sense. It still doesn't. I'll be honest. But just with go you. with it, buddy. Just, just go I'm with it. I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> well, so, I tell people that you, uh, I, ne- I don't have a sister, but that if I did, she'd be you. Yeah. But yeah. I, I I feel like there's some sort of adoption somewhere and we actually are related. That's crazy. By it's possible. sisterhood and brotherhood. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we are. But so I, uh, speaking of Wagyu, um, So my one day a week job with my bestie, um, who supplied me with this, uh, container to drink my coffee. I I think I showed you guys this last week. So, um, Dr. Patty, uh, took us for a, a basically like an employee appreciation day. So, um, we went to the Four Seasons Hotel and they Mm. have a restaurant there called Cinder House. And we went there for dinner after some drinks, very fun time. I got the Wagyu. Never had it before. I sent John the menu. Poor John did not get to partake. But I sent the menu and I said, John, what should I get? They had like hen of the woods mushrooms and this Wagyu and then filet mignon and all these things, you know. And he goes, I would get the Wagyu. And I said, done. It was delicious. It was a little fattier than I thought it would be, but I know that that's where a lot of the flavor that's comes where, from. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you and I, that's where our flavor comes from. It's the fat. <laughs> Period. Like that must that's be why we're so delicious. Then. Yeah. That's why. Yes, that's why our our podcast is so delicious because it, it, the flavor comes from the fat. Sure. I don't know how else to explain it. But anyway, so I had the Hen of the Woods mushrooms, which were really good. They were charred just a smidge too much for my liking. But I don't know. Mm. Is that the way it's supposed to be? I don't know. And then the Wagyu was delicious. And it had like a, golly, I'll have to look it up Mm. what it was. But it was like a puree that almost, 
it was like almost a mix of grits with mashed potatoes with good flavor. It was it was really good. And then there were green onions, um, like sauteed green onions on top, like the whole green onion. I was like, okay, uh, but I ate it. It was really good. <laughs> So I think I I want to I want to go there for our anniversary, which is coming up in twenty days. John and I have been married for eleven years, um, and actually April twenty second or twenty third, crap, uh, is when we actually met. Yes, yes. So in two thousand really? and two thousand and six, <clears throat> so. Gosh, that's 15 years that we've been together, minus a little snub in there once or twice. <laughs> anyway, so 15 years okay. coming up at the end of the month. So, I would so love it was a good take, place. Not take John, you, but I would love to go with John to this place to have dinner sure. again. Because it's a little <laughs> fancy. I felt bad for the waiters and stuff because most of us were a little... The drinks, pre-dinner drinks really let like helped us let loose we were not proper at the four seasons for dinner it was it was fun though and then the next day we played demolition ball let me explain this to you you're in bumper cars yes please and you have these hand net things kind of like lacrosse and you have like a giant wiffle ball and you're like checking on in bumper, bumper cars? cars, yes. That's kind of badass, actually. That's it was you get hurt. it was fun, but yeah, I have a bruise on my stomach because the you have just this little pole that sits up in the middle, and that's how you steer your bumper car. You have to like you know do that, and so if you get bumped, and that pole is like right by your gut, it's going in. Yeah, it's like stir that wagyu right up. Well, yeah. that was the night before. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, but yeah, I have a nice sized bruise on my belly from the steering pole, whatever you want to call oh. it. Anyway, well, it sounds like you guys had a very mature, tasty uh, night out with some friends, and uh, it was so high class, so high class. Yeah, but we were. I, I think I saw a <laughs> video of you winning a couple bucks somewhere and doing some sort of. Uh, oh yeah, she took us to a casino. Some goofy dance. I was dancing because I won some monies. <laughs> so she gave us well, all $50. Uh, I only used 20 though. So I had the original 20 uh, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I won 95 off of that 20. So I left with lots more money. Um, and the reason I, I feel like I'm kind <clears> of <throat> like doing that a lot is because they, they allow smoking in the casino. Mm. And I... I wish there was like a non-smoking casino area because I feel like in Vegas was there one. I feel like maybe there was like a non-smoking area. But now like my <clears throat> sinuses and all that stuff. Are, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the better better than, than my weekend. <clears throat> oh. So. I. You know what, Carl? Here's a, here's a joke. <laughs> uh, Carlos, do you know what um, Carlos Rodriguez, the comedian, and I? I can't I think of it. Hold on. This. Yeah. Okay. So I have a joke. <laughs> really? What do <laughs> what do Carlos Rodriguez and Ted Kaczynski have in common? What? They're both bombers. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, <laughs> add, add insult to injury. Yeah, just a little. I had salt, <sighs> salt to your wind. I do these shows, right? I've been doing these shows with this guy um, named Fountain Lewis, right? As cool as the yes. name sounds, he's as cool as the yes. name sounds. Okay. So, I mean, I think he's a. Uh, Here's the thing. He's kind of cryptic. Super cool dude. He's maybe a couple years older than me. Maybe 10. Okay. Um, And maybe like 6'5". So he puts these shows together called uh, Jazz and Jokes. And he and I have okay. been doing these things since 
2012, maybe. Okay. And actually, his show was the first time I did 12 minutes long. So when you're starting off, you might have one good five minute set. Yeah. Yeah. You might have 15 minutes if you stretch it. But then it's not really solid material all the way through. But you right. know, you really only got maybe eight minutes of trying. Right. And you have a good beginning, a good end, and the middle is like you know. Yeah, and they're making it up as they go along. So it's it's not. Yeah. Or, or you're you're new to the game. You don't know what rhythms to to, to go with. Okay. Yes. Once or twice a year, I'll go in and and do one of his shows, and he has a live band. This time was this dude, uh, call him the mayor. Okay. And the guy's uh, an amazing saxophone player i'm sure he plays okay. a bunch of other things but most of these guys have cross trained in different instruments yeah yeah but he's got albums out this dude is sick with it you know and uh so there was a drummer a keyboard guy and a bassist and they start off and then gary comes up and they're doing okay hits from the 70s and once you hear him you know what the song is right yeah my job is to after the, the intermission, to go up and do the jokes portion of the show. Okay. A 20-minute set, right? And then <laughs> get off and take another little break, and they do like another 45 minutes worth of music, and then the show's over, right? Yeah. I usually okay. leave after my set. Yeah. And at the old place, it was a guaranteed murder because it was a mixed crowd. Okay. Okay? And most of the crowd... Was, uh, I'd say, from thirty five maybe to seventy, right? Mm-hmm. Mostly affluent African American folks, and maybe twenty five percent white folks, right? Okay. So okay, that's my audience. I, I and and I'm good there. I do relationship stuff. I do okay, and I'm yes. good, right? Yes. This group. Same demographic, but they were there celebrating this lady's birthday. Okay. Right? So, first time out in over a year. This is his first show back in over a year. They were talking, taking selfies during the band. And the band is amazing. Oh, And I'm going, this is going to suck. You know? So they take a break, and he's like, "All right, everybody, get back in. Shh, everybody tell your neighbor to shush and sit down. I got this amazing comedian, good friend of mine. We've been doing this. We've been grinding for the last eight, ten years together." Da 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 da. Yeah. Da. Bro, it was like pulling teeth. So, <laughs> but at, the, at one point, I figure I'm going down in flames. I'm going down swinging. Right? Okay. Okay. So when I pulled in, there was a. Uh, a tailor shop on the corner called Little Stitches, right? Yes. Like anybody else notice the shop on the corner, Little Stitches? Is that where Little Snitches go? Right? Because <laughs> snitches get stitches. Right. I get it. Stupid. Topical. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Nothing. And one dude, four feet away, goes, boo. I go, really, sir? Re- you going to heckle me? From the VIP section, man. You know? Uh, and at one point, I go, man, when you guys don't laugh, you all don't laugh at once. That is amazing. Did you guys plan this out to hurt my feelings? Do I need to go table to table and hand tickle everybody? Is that what's going to go down? <laughs> and uh, so I threatened to go around the room. And, dude, in, at this point, it was uh, it was just rough. It was a rough show. Yeah. And, you know, I got like- him a little bit. On the ropes or whatever, um, but they w- they weren't giving it up, man. It, it was just mm. it wasn't a feel good set. And he- but here's the good thing. Yeah. Here's the good thing. I'm I'm being an optimist lately, and here's the good thing. Yes. When you do stand up, sometimes you're gonna eat it. Sometimes it's the person before you. Sometimes it's the wrong oh, yeah. audience. You, sometimes you can't it's- win them all. They can't all be gems, like you always say. Sometimes it's a lot of times it's you. Your your energy is off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe I yeah. let the the way they were treating the band. So when I go to the band, I go, man, yeah. this is this is gonna be rough, man. He goes, man, they ain't listening us to they ain't listening to us either. Taking selfies and stuff. Yeah. And so it wasn't play. you. So I go, you know, I'll, I'll I'll own some of it, you know. Um, but I think they just weren't there. They were there to hang out with their friends. 
Oh, that's, yeah. That's what, it, yeah. that's what it was. It's the birthday party. So, yeah. And they were talking and chit-chatting and carrying on. And it was just like distracting. And then this dude's booming in the front row. And I'm like, really? You guys? And um, anyway, so it, it wasn't a feel good. And then five minutes later, I'm fine. You know, I, I got my money and I got the hell Dusty out of there. Dusty shoulders yeah. off and move that's along. All, that's all you can do. <laughs> but here's the upside, like I was telling you. Um, okay. Okay. Bombs are coming. They're, they're coming along further intervals. But they're, they, they, they still happen, right? Yes. And I'd much rather bomb on this one gig. Loser crowd. No, no, they weren't a loser crowd. They just weren't in the mood for, for, for stand-up. They just, just, you know what I mean? They wanted to hang out with their friends that they haven't seen in a long time. And everybody was dressed yeah. up. And um, I go to Fontaine. I go, dude, I don't know what happened. I, I go, sorry, man. It happens. I go, they can't all be gems. He's like, don't worry about it, CeeLo. No, it's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. You know, CeeLo? That's what he, yeah, that's what he calls me. He's like, he, he goes, he's a little something for you, man. And I'm like, yeah. you know, so. You still got paid. <laughs> so what I was telling, I keep I keep starting this story and I don't finish. The good okay. part about it is that the, you know, the bombs are coming and there's, there's a certain amount of interval apart from each other. So yes. I just had a bomb. So I probably won't bomb again for a good while, which means, smiles at sea. I'm You're gonna a, rock it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I got it out of my system. You know what I mean? Yes. Get so. that crap out of your system before you go. <laughs> so you know, and I heard I've, I've heard other comics say the same thing, and I'm like, okay, all right, that's the one way of looking at it, because it happens to, yeah. to the best of them. You know, Richard Pryor recorded a set. I think it was live on the Sunset Strip. Mm-hmm. Famous comedy stand-up movie yes. when I was a kid. I want to say maybe 83, 79. I don't know. It was a long time ago, right? Yeah. And I I knew who he was and I wanted to go. But my mom was like, there's no there's no way you're going to go see. I'm thinking to go see Richard <laughs> Pryor. A movie yeah. concert? You know, there's no, you, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I've always been attracted to, to stand-up. But the point is that I read a thing where he goes, the first thing, let's say Friday night. The energy wasn't right. He's like, nah, we're going to reshoot it Saturday. Reshot it. Yeah. Same exact jokes. Different audience. Yes. Everything hit like like electricity. And and if it happened to Richard Pryor, and I'm not saying he bombed. I'm just saying it wasn't yeah. to his level of where he was satisfied with the amount of laughs, you know? His audience was slacking. Yeah, and then sometimes, like, the, like when we were at the club... When we have a small audience or half of them are yeah. stoned out of their minds and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's somebody yeah. too drunk and they're talking and that kind of thing. Yeah. So there's, there's a million and one distractions. So you can't gauge them all like, oh, I suck. It's like, all right, let me just take a step back. Let me see what happened and break it down. That way we can fix it if you can. If you can't, then, you know, try to not to yeah. put yourself in those situations. There's some gigs I don't take. I, I just yeah. won't because I've done them. Like daytime gigs at a corporate place? Nah, son. Ugh. Horrible. Zoom stuff? Mm-mm. Yeah. You know, unless the money's You've learned a lot. Ridiculous. You've yeah, learned, learned a lot, lot because of COVID. Yeah. You take a couple what beatings. what you will and won't do. And, um, yeah, which isn't a whole lot, but there, there, there's so even to me, there's some limits. But <laughs> You got to put a line in the sand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You gotta yeah. draw a line somewhere. So yeah, so that was my weekend. But you know, it's it's that was Friday night, and by Saturday morning, I was, I was good to go. Um, can I do a movie review real quick? Yeah, what movie? King Kong versus Godzilla, or Godzilla versus King okay, Kong? Okay, so I saw on? I saw that it was playing at a few theaters. Let's hear it. No spoilers. <clears throat> I saw it on uh, HBO Max. Oh, at home. Okay. Yeah. So I started. Friday night to watch yeah. it and I fell asleep. I tried to watch it yesterday morning and I had something to do. So I stayed up late last night. I, I fell asleep watching TV uh, with, with the grandbaby downstairs. And then I wake yeah. up, he's gone. They, they threw him in the crib. And I'm, oh. on, I'm in the <laughs> living room floor like a lunatic, you know, next to the spot where he was. Yeah. And my son goes, where's the baby? And I'm like, where, where is he? He's like, we <laughs> don't do that to me, man. You can't wake me up like this. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know, I was panicked. You know, and but we got the room sealed off. Like, 
Mm-hmm. I, 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 you got a gate here, boxes up over here. I got like, a big living baby room. Can't so get out. We have like kind of like a baby yeah. gate thing that's like a corral, but we got half of yeah. it on one end and half of it on the other, so he can't get into things. Because right, he, if it's dangerous, he'll find it. Oh yes, that's what babies do. So, they, they are a dangerous radar gun. So no. it's like twelve thirty, maybe one o'clock. All right. Yeah. So I go upstairs and my wife is is dozing off. So I get some headphones and I start watching it on my iPad. Two hours later, I'm like, I hate when movies try to inject. All right, everybody knows that Godzilla and King Kong aren't real. But do the movie. I told you no spoilers. But do the movie the way you think you would, the way you really would react if they were real. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't make yes. dumb jokes. Because if there's a, a 5,000 foot giant lizard that shot laser beams out of his mouth yes or atomic breath i think that's what they called it mm-hmm. which i had a dude that came in one time with atomic breath i told you about that guy right oh yeah i think we get him sometimes yes yeah and a, a giant gorilla and they're, they're they're kickboxing in the middle of the street. i'm just saying act like it's you, you're this close to dying is is, is all i'm saying you know what I mean, dude? Yeah. I was so annoyed, man, with the movie. But I still watched it just to see what happened at the end. Um, yeah. Special effects are cool. But I, I think they're just they try to make everything funny now. Uh, yeah. I think to a certain extent they've just kind of given up a little bit as a movie industry. Because there's – well, and then part of it is with COVID, like, they're not going to make the big bucks that they normally would – and that's why they're doing this early release to Prime or early release to HBO Max, whatever. It's because they're just not making the monies. So why put all this effort and time and money into a movie that's not going to recoup, you right. know? So <clears throat> let's just use hand puppets and videography to make it look like this person over here is like tiny and this hand puppet is giant. Dude, with CGI nowadays, they don't even need people anymore. You know what I'm saying? They just use hand puppets. Yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. It, it's in um, and the Godzilla's face looked like it had been burnt off once or twice. Mm. That you happens know? when you're dragon with fire. When you breath. shoot atomic breath. That kind of makes sense now. now yeah, that I think about it. Oh, because he was wearing a mask, right? And then he tried to, and then it went right back in his face. No, I mean, it, all I'm saying is the, the movie That's was <laughs> was kind of dumb. I mean, even though it's a dumb thing anyway, but I grew up watching King Kong and Godzilla and uh, mm-hmm. Godzilla, you know, and he's just just destroying Tokyo or whatever, you know, shooting the, yeah. the atomic breath and the Mothra and the three-headed snake thing and all that stuff. Yes, yeah. I Were they it, in the man. movie too? Uh, I don't know. You got to watch and see. Oh. The okay. giant turtle one that spun around and his arms and legs tucked in and he shot fire out of his armholes. Remember that one? And he spun Vaguely. around and he took off like a, like a giant. I mean, all that goofy stuff. So I grew up with that stuff. Yes. And the visuals have gotten a million times better and the sound effects and everything. Like there's a couple scenes yeah. that were fighting or whatever. And it was badass. But just the, the, the writing was just kind of dumb and the acting. Mm. Oh, but here's the thing. Yeah. What do we have in common with that movie? One of the main characters was a podcaster. What? Wow. Yeah, man. We're getting like more recognition as podcasters. He was kind of a kook, but, you know, let's just focus on the podcasting part. That's perfect for us. Focus on the podcasting part. So, That's awesome. So what else are you, what are you doing this week? Anything Anything good? You got anything coming up? Oh, um, so no, we've been working on the camper um we met with the electric company so we should be getting electric soon i hope and then um we had a birthday party yesterday so we were like on fire working on this camper yesterday john put both of the vent fans in it didn't come with the parts that it needed so amazon gave me a credit for that thank you because we had to go to a the do it center and get them and go back and stuff and we got flooring for it, so I'm hoping that we're going to put that in later today, maybe. Anyway, so we're just fire. Let's get this done. How big a camper is we- this thing? 23 feet. That's kind of good size, right? 
Um, no. <laughs> Where you it's like crap? a large bathroom. <laughs> I was trying to gauge like how big this room is. I feel like it is smaller than this sliver of this room. And we're going to have four dogs in it. Oh, yeah. So. You guys are going to... Yeah. I know. We talked about this. Sandy on location. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just uh, as an aside, do you have tethering on your phone? Uh, No, but I, I could. Why? That's how you're going to power your laptop, probably. Oh, so I'm going to get a, a hotspot from, like, Verizon or something. I'm going to go up there to the top of the hill where we're going to put the camper and on a test out different um, services and stuff. And I'm going to get a, a mobile hotspot with hopefully unlimited because we're going to have to watch TV, uh, stream things using it, too. So Sure. We'll see. So I saw some lady. She was in the mountains of North Carolina, and I I, I shouldn't even bring it up because I I don't know what it was that she was using. She goes, they don't have yeah. a wired connection, but she did something like that. She bought yeah the hotspot cellular thing and connected the Wi Fi yeah. to that, and just they were they were good to go. So yeah, so hopefully that'll work okay. Um, and then that was pretty much it. Well, the weekend, you know, we went to Four Seasons, had Wagyu sure. demolition ball. Uh, that sort of thing, and then worked, worked, work, 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 whatever song that is. Let me. Have you ever ordered work. clothes off of Amazon? Clothes. Yeah. Yes, that's basically all I've shopped. That and Stitch Fix. How do they fit? It depends. So if you go on Amazon, it'll say. Um, so there's a part where you can put in your profile, like sizes that you wear. And based off of that, it'll say, we suggest this size. And then you can read, it'll say, fits as expected, something percent. So like 87%. That means that people who ordered it, it fit the way they expected it to. And then if you click on that, they, it says, was it too big? Was it too small? And then you gauge how many people said it was too big or too small. Most gotcha. of them say it fits as expected, but it's it's there's a system. Okay, Amazon. I don't know that system has. yet. Ordered some. Uh, I'm trying to get some golf shorts. Yeah, got a little stretch to them. They're not cargo pants. They're not gym shorts. They're like shorts Are you a man go would golfing? wear. No, but they're comfortable. My oh, son okay. wears them. He's that we've never touched the golf club. But I gotta do it. I gotta get me some because all I okay. have is gym shorts. You know what I mean? And if I'm going to be yeah. in Miami, I need I need I don't want to say professional looking shorts, but you know what I'm saying, neater yeah. than just gym stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I'm not wearing cargo mm -hmm. shorts because I'm not 22. And I, don't, I, I, hate, I probably need to get some things too because I hate stuff on on the outside of my thighs if that makes sense, like those pockets with stuff in them. Yeah, I feel like it throws my balance off. Coco, you got to go. You you just have to make sure both sides have something in them that weigh about the same. The same amount, yeah. The same amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, ordered some in a size that's supposed to fit. And I, I couldn't, they were, the edges weren't even thinking about touching. Were they made in China? May, maybe. I because go, here's the thing. They make, if you order any clothes from China, you need to get like two to three sizes bigger than what you normally would because my wife it's told like me that they afterwards. have a totally different system of measuring yeah. people. So, um, yeah, I couldn't even think about putting those on. And yeah. so I go to the store last night. We hit the mall, bought yeah. two pairs of shorts, different brands, and they don't let you try things on in the store anymore. You got to take them home because of COVID. I know, COVID. it's horrible. Come home, try them on, fit like a glove. Same size like as the stuff they ordered. I know. Yeah, it was probably made in China. I ordered a dress, so I saw this really cute dress. It was black and had this white collar that looked real fancy. I think it was for a Smiles at Sea event or something. And I ordered it, and it was basically stuffed sausage. Yeah, not good at all. 
So. Yeah, and it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about how it fits, dude. And then I, I was like, I'm like, am I crazy? Because these are the size of the jeans that I'm wearing with, you know. And I'm like, do I have to order more? And I was like, you know what? Screw this. So I went to Kohl's and returned them, and then we went to the mall and uh, more expensive. But yeah. they fit, you know what I mean. So I'm like, whatever, yeah. dude. I'll pay the extra, whatever, and just when I need stuff that uh, looks good and fits. Bottom when line. I shop, when I shop for clothes on Amazon, and I need something right away, I will order this size and the next size up, and then return the one that didn't fit because oh. I don't have time to try it on, return it, order another one, blah blah blah. So I just mm-hmm. order both sizes and return the one that doesn't fit. But if I if I have all the time in the world, then I'll order this one, try it on, doesn't fit, send it back, order another one, that sort of thing. So they must have warehouses yeah. full of stuff that people return. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've seen people yes. on YouTube buy pallets of returned Amazon stuff. Yeah, and then they turn around and sell it. It, it. The other thing is, you can go on Amazon and and I know this because I've I've tried. <sighs> buying the the slightly used like new or gently used whatever you get a discount for trying it and then sometimes it's just the packaging that's messed up the item inside is fine so yeah. sometimes you can get good deals like that my dresser in my bedroom i got it for like 50 bucks and it was 180 dollars or something because it was uh like the box was damaged or there was like a scratch on the back of it i'm like you, you know what damn. I mean? Put it in a corner, you know? Yeah. Um, I buy so some yeah, of that's, tools like that. Yeah. They're called blemished. Yeah. And, I, and I, I go, what's wrong with them? He goes, the box is ripped up. I go, but it's, it hasn't been returned or anything. He goes, like, no, that's reconditioned or whatever, they, you know, yeah. refurbished. Yeah. And um, and then this is, um, like I said, slightly damaged or whatever, whatever the term is. Right. So right. the box just has a hole in it? And I'm saving fifty bucks on a ninety dollar yes, tool. Give me, yeah. Give me the, give me the other thing too. And you go so some stores. Some stores call have what's called open box. So a um, a patron bought this, opened it, decided they didn't like it for whatever reason, and it's usually not. I don't think it's usually damaged. It's just been opened and stuff. And you can get a discount for that too. And I'm like, yes, please. I got my projector. That we have, uh, you know, to watch movies on projector uh, from Best Buy. It was a nine hundred dollar projector, and I got it for three fifty because it was open box, and I've had it since two thousand and nine, two thousand nine, and it, it still work? works. Can you still use it? Yeah. Oh yeah. So we had to replace the color wheel, and then one other thing. But John, he just like YouTubed how to fix it and fixed it. And it was like a ten dollar part or something. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Oh, last night, uh, we had our inaugural um, fire pit in the new Adirondack oh. chairs. Oh, nice! So was it, I go, was it nice? We, oh, it was so nice. And um, we have my wife wanted lights around it, so she we got like these little twinkly. I think they're called. Fairy lights or something. Fairy lights or something. So she made me rig yeah. these up. So I made some buckets for it with concrete and we spray painted them black. So they're kind of in the corners and the lights are strung up. Anyway, nice. We bought this fire pit thing. I don't know, around Christmas time, gave it to the kids. It's been sitting out there. Yeah. And I'm like, and it's like a, like a, like a wok kind of grill looking thing. Right? Yeah. And it has mm-hmm. a little fire thing to keep the little pieces from flying out. So we bought right. one of those uh, logs. Uh, yeah, door flame or whatever it is, threw that the in there. Starter like logs, yeah. And uh, I started it with my little can of propane, mm-hmm. and then we burnt up all the little sticks. So I made a big pile of sticks before we started, and it got dark. Yeah. So every, every five minutes, I throw another handful of sticks on, cleaned up all, the whole area right around, right around the <laughs> the pit. Yeah. Excuse me. And uh, it was just a nice because it was cool last night. You know, it's going to get yeah. hot soon. And uh, so we were sitting out there in sweaters and shorts and just nice. It was just, it was just real, real nice to, to, to do. So, yeah, um, you have some good conversations. I even had a, the kids had a 
can of margarita something. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I feel like I could go for a, a drink. And my wife was like, can he have one of those? I, I didn't even know this was in the fridge. Because I, yeah. I don't really drink. But, you know, sometimes you get right. that. And, yeah. Uh, you get a hankling, hankering, hankering. And my son goes, oh, they only have one car. But I'm like, yeah, go get it. It was tart. It was it was good, but it, it was it was like a girly drink, yeah. you know. But it was, and I don't anyway. But it was just it was just nice to sit outside and uh, fire up the pit. Oh Plus yeah, I like fire. I like I, burning stuff. Pyro, yeah, your shushlugger, shushlugi, sh- that shush bun. thing. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, that proves you're a pyro. Um, so one other thing that I was gonna bring up. What did we, and uh, it seems like in the wee hours of the morning, I have these random thoughts. You know, I start thinking, well, what if we. You should talk to somebody about that. What? (laughs) You should talk to somebody about that. Not like (laughs) thoughts of doing Doing mean things to people. No, no violence. Um, I, like one morning I woke up and I was like, what if we move these cabinets here and push this stuff in and made the island look like that? You know, all these things. Sure. Well, this morning I was thinking about what are, what are the, what is the earliest form of flossing? Like, what did they use? And, and then, you know, because it was Easter, I was like, I wonder, did Jesus floss? I, I, I have a feeling. Did he that have they, to? I mean, I'm sure they still got, he still got bacteria. I mean, did the bacteria know who he was? I don't know. So, I don't know. I don't know. Did you look so, it up? That, did Jesus have periobacteria? Is that what you're saying? No, like what the people use. No. <laughs> no. Uh, but I'm assuming that they, they used like horse hair or something along those lines. I'm going to say corn silk. <clears throat> corn silk? Yeah. You think it was strong enough? If you had enough perio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Carlos. I don't know. Oh, snap. I'm you out of look coffee. this up. You're a cheater. No. What? Am I right? Ancient remains have been found with grooves worn between their teeth, uh, suggesting regular use of floss and toothpicks. It's widely accepted that mm. horse hair was used as the first type of dental floss. Dang. And well, horse hair was there... also used as bristles in early toothbrushes. I knew I knew the horse hair was used for brushes, not necessarily toothbrushes, but brushes in general. So that's why I thought, oh, well, maybe they floss with it too. Carlos, I don't know if you know who you're talking to. I, I evidently I didn't. I, I had no idea who I was talking to. It's, I'm a genius. It's you're like a savant, really, of dental hygiene. Yeah. Thank you. And then silk floss was introduced. The earliest iteration of modern dental floss is 1815 by New Orleans. Dentist named Dr. Levi Spear Parmley. Encourage him to f- floss with a waxed what? silken thread after each visit. What what do you think like encouraged people to start putting things in between their teeth? Well, here's the thing. Like, if I they mean, found ancient stuff, I guess you, people have always gotten meat and stuff stuck between their teeth, man. Right. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, what can I use to get this out? Oh, there's a horse over there. I think it was invented around the same time they invented popcorn. Necessity is the mother of invention, you know? That's true, because everybody needs popcorn. Well, popcorn gets stuck in in between your teeth. Oh, I see what you did there. Seriously, where I'm going with this? Yes. The husks. Damn Mm. husks. You used all (laughs) your energy on the, all your brain power on the, on the horsehair prediction. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm only a, a hygiene savant for so long, and then my brain power just, like, you know, powers down, trickles it, to a minimum. Then you eat a couple starbursts, and it recharges. <laughs> when you reach your limit with unlimited um, internet 
and then they go, oh, it's they still unlimited, it. but it's like, woo, doo, 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 doo. we're gonna throttle now. A you're bit, you're dial up, so yes, yeah. So yeah, if you throw a bunch of starburst on the floor, um, I don't count them, but I'll eat them. So <laughs> the um. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask you this: Do you still get down with Starburst like that? Uh, like, do you, do you, do you mess with them much? Still, so or? I try, I try not to. However, when I went to Texas to see um, my sister and Big Tuna, we had a movie night, which is where we just let let loose, let wild, go wild, and we sure. buy candy and Oreos and da da da, gluten free Oreos. But anyway. So I got a bag, a big bag of tropical Starburst, and I brought it home with me, and I ate them until they were gone. So yeah, but it doesn't happen often. But I'm gonna tell you, the cravings, it's it's like cocaine. I, I I mean I I don't know that for a fact, but if you had to guess, I've I've read the I've I've watched the movie documentary where it talks about how it affects the same parts of your brain as cocaine does. So, I still think about them. You know, there's no doubt that um, this food addiction thing is is a serious problem. So, oh, I'm yeah. not looking at it as here's here's what I'm doing because psychologically it helps me better. Again, yes. I have a weak will. Yes. Right. Okay. And so if I say I'm going to deny myself X, Y, and Z, then I kind of want it more and I'm, I'm pissed off about it and I'm not happy yeah. about it. You know what I mean? And then when you snap, you go you go in deep, you know? Crazy. Like you, you just a, go a overboard. Like, well, well if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it good. Um, That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas if it was oh. drugs, I would OD, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oof. You know? That's a scary thought. Hmm. But uh, you know, I because I know if I have one soda, I'm gonna have three, and I'm not. I don't want to. Yeah. want to go there. You know. So yeah. I'm doing it as an experiment, <laughs> just to see what happens. Yeah, it's kind of like the Pringles, uh, jingle or whatever, where it says once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. So it's like that. Yeah. I'm curious but, hey, to see if oh. our listeners have any. Uh, Things that they, they can't say no to. Yeah. So if you want to leave a yeah. comment. Yeah. Drop a, on drop YouTube a little or line. On Facebook or whatever. You know. I mean, that probably wasn't appropriate. Not drop a line. Um, uh, Write something in the comments. Just take a little bump. and. Uh, no. No. Carlos. No. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I better get ready for uh, Easter Sunday church. But oh yeah, um, uh, oh so I just want to let out one more spoiler alert. You can do some sort of, you know, flash across the screen because this is very important. Spoiler what alert. Do you got? What do you got? Are you ready? Yeah. We are not perfect. There, I said it. Cool. Because, and I want to say this, because Aurelia was supposed to be on this episode, but I text Carlos the night before we were supposed to record with Aurelia, Aurelia and I go, hey, do you mind if we do it Sunday morning because I got this, this, and this? And he's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Well, Saturday morning, Aurelia messages, uh, messaged us and goes, hey, guys. And I was like, as soon as I saw it, I go... Oh, crap. So, yeah, th- gratefully, um, uh, she is she is uh, gracious in her forgiveness to us. Um, and we are going to re-record next week with her. Uh, but big apologies uh, to Aurelia. But I want yes. you guys to understand that this woman and has she done... She was super cool about it. She is amazing, and she has the A-Flex assist arm. Yeah. This is the aerosol-collecting um, funnel, basically, that ho- hooks up to your high-speed um, suction. Plus, she has these other items, and now... So I started using the Cord Ease. You know that one? Uh, Debbie Densick uh, invented that, another hygienist. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I need that. Well, I started using it, and I was like, what? 
what? I love it. So the Aflex Assist Arm is the same thing. It's like this gadget that you really need in your life. Like it makes life You don't better. know you need it until you start messing with it. Right. Um, but she has other items, uh, products too, that free up your hands. Because, you know, I forget gar- g- something, whatever the Mortal Kombat guy with multiple arms. Like we are not that person. Although every dentist expects an assistant to have four arms or something but since we are not that industry six they would prefer eight probably but since we are not that person what's his name goga or goo goo or gogi or gargamel gargamel no that's (laughs) that's the smurfs (laughs) anyway we are not that person however with the aflex assist arm uh and the aflex line of products you can actually basically be four to eight handed so it has something that holds the high speed suction it has something to hold the slow speed suction and then they're coming out with more products too so i can't say enough about a really off label use um it'll hold a wine glass too so yeah she's proven that multiple times so if you over and over on in one evening and and do uh two quads and then and then weird things happen. I don't know what it, kind of state it, you but live it's fine. in, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's legal. No. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, thank you, Aurelia, for being so gracious with us that that uh, our perfection has decreased in quality. And um, we'll get you and on this here. this never happened before. And it was so seriously. We, we apologize. And uh, it, it was yeah. an oversight. And uh, yeah. But you guys need to check out aflexassistarm.com and, and see the products that can probably save your life. And if you want to get free shipping, you can put the discount code free shipping one and uh, boom, you're welcome. And there you go. Uh, So I think uh, it's probably about time to go. Time to say, yeah. Yeah. Still floss yourselves? Happy Easter. On Easter? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Jesus probably did floss. With horse Um, hair. With horse, horse or donkey, donkey hair. Yeah. Maybe. Um, so thank you guys for being avid listeners. Our listenership keeps increasing, increasing, increasing by multiple. We don't know why, multiples. but we're grateful. I think somebody yeah. just stumbled across it and said, what is this craziness? And then that counts as a download. I don't know. Yeah. So now we went from what? Two to seven. Or so. Anyway. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Be good. Yeah. Have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not the only one that's bombing, you know? Thanks. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> but All that right. means you're good. You got it out of the way. All right. Our Thanks, team. guys, for Enjoy. being here. Yes. Go check us out. If you have something cool to say, offyourflosser at gmail.com. Uh, we'll check out our website, offyourflosser.com. Yes, uh, and ma'am. then find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're pretty much everywhere. So Yeah, boy. And with that, happy Easter and go happy floss Easter, yourselves. Folks. Take care and go floss yourselves. Have a good one. Bye.